Hey everybody and welcome to the movie show with Ed. Hello Ed. Hi James. And James. Um, and tonight we are going to watch the cult classic that is Flash Gordon, the 1980s. Often riffed on in the movie Ted, but beloved by many. It's an absolute cheese fest with the epic soundtrack by Queen. Just had to be done, this particular movie. Massive fan of it. Um, it hasn't aged well, but that's part of its charm. So let's just get it going. And Ed and I will do our usual thing and we'll just chat through the movie. We've got some facts and stuff about the film, about Flash Gordon character um, himself. But let's get the show on the road. So this is the Blu-ray, this is like a collector's edition I got, it also comes with a movie soundtrack. Cool. Yeah, got it for a Christmas present a few years ago. I love the way that's disdain in his voice. I love that control panel of memes where he's got all sorts of destructive things that he can do. Earthquakes, volcanoes. Hail fire, <laughs> all the usual sorts of stuff. Later, I like to play with things a while before annihilation. <laughs> <laughs> Sam J. Jones is now is he bodyguard in I he he's not bodyguard in New Mexico or something like that no? is he? yeah <laughs> didn't realise that the former playgirl centrefold <laughs> that is Sam J. Jones it's a bit hard not to do air guitar isn't it sometimes <laughs> I can't remember one of them's got a cat, hasn't she? For his uh, Bellini or something like that. Because I was reading a um, little synopsis of it. Yeah. And apparently, when it was first produced, they wanted an Italian guy to direct it. Oh, because yeah. he did all the comics when they were banned in Italy. He did all the Flash comics. They wanted him to do it. And he turned it down. So what they did is they named the cat after him as a sort of a ah. a little nod. Thank you, but you know, yeah. which is quite funny, really. When you when you look, I mean, you know, we talk about movies, and you just think, oh, so I'll just have a quick browse, just make sure you know some of my facts are right, you yeah, know, yeah. and so what year it was out, running time, and all sorts of stuff like that. And you look at it, and you think, you know what? I never knew that. Never knew that at all. I did a bit of um, a bit of research prior to this as well, and he was Flash Gordon was created so as a counterpoint because Book Rogers was already out. Um, and as yeah, I don't think we've had a Book Rogers movie. We've had quite a few TV series and probably some film serials. But not an actual um, a movie of Buck Rogers yet. And these flashes are sort of a mixture of him and a um, John Carter of Mars. Doing a lot of revivals and a lot of retro stuff, so wouldn't surprise me if the Buck Rogers movie isn't long before it's green yet, or even just a Buck Rogers. TV show or something like that. Well, they're doing another Flash Gordon movie, so Matthew Vaughan's doing the next Flash Gordon movie. Director of um, Kingsman and Kick Ass, X Men First Class. And it's hard to believe that the director of Get Carter, <laughs> the Michael Caine revenge movie, is also the director of camp classic Flash Gordon. I remember this coming out at the, uh, at the cinema. Not at the cinema. I remember this coming out on TV one Christmas and like sitting around the TV watching it, thinking like this is totally amazing. He was um, 
being entirely dubbed as well. She refused, Sanjay Jones refused to do a bit of overdubbing or um, additional dialogue recording. Uh, and then uh, Dino De Laurentiis lost it and decided that actually he's going to dub his entire part. That's good old Porkins. It is Porkins, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, what's interesting as well, he's in Raiders of the Lost Ark as well, that actor. He's the guy who says they've got top men working on it. Who? Which top men? Top. Men. <laughs> so even in the even in the 1930s when he, he the character was written, he was written as someone who's half mad. Yeah. It's alcohol. Well, it's quite strange because when you actually look at a lot of stuff that came out in the 30s, 40s, and even a bit later and a bit earlier. I know, obviously, I'll some of it is still far fetched, but how much stuff that has come to pass that, you know, you've got spaceships, um, some of the scientific facts that they came up with ideas that were just science fiction at the time that have actually been proven to be correct. From outer space. But you look at them things, saying you've got like 1984 with Big Brother and all that type of stuff, and. Time for us to go on soon. Population scrutiny, spin doctors, all that type of stuff. It's all coming to it's all coming to fact. Of course, you're going to be absolutely spot on and crash land next to a boat. You've got a spaceship. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Melody, Melody Anderson, the actress who played. Um, Dale Arden also played the female lead in the short-lived American TV show Manimal. <laughs> now, everybody must remember and love Manimal. If you haven't, you must look it up on YouTube. The amazing story of a man who can turn into any animal he wishes, however, he only turns into about three. A hawk, a big black cat, and I can't remember what the other one was. It might be a bear. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't look suspicious at all. No. Considering that we know the level of force required for a ship to leave Earth's gravity, we're not really struggling. He seems to be struggling, but Flash, but no one should be putting his seatbelt on. Oh, the fact that the ship isn't going in a straight line either. It wobbles. <laughs> Top Hole, who you would also later see in For Your Eyes Only, James Bond. <laughs> Actually, probably one of the better Roger Moore entries. Why haven't they got helmets on either? Is he created a totally breathable environment in there? Why is her head turned towards him when the ship's <laughs> turned in the opposite direction? <laughs> You've got to love Max von Sydow in this film though, he is brilliant as me. Oh, he's awesome. Apparently his costume weighed 70 pounds in weight, and in between takes he had to take it off because it was just too heavy for him to walk around in. I mean, if you consider he's not exactly a very muscular guy, he's, no. quite, he's quite broad, quite tall, but... The costumes in this are wickedly bad. His middle parting's turned into a side parting. Those red ones are definitely like, um, the cross between a stormtrooper and the Imperial Guard. Yeah. Like the go-go gadget hands. <laughs> Because um, George Lucas wanted to do this, didn't he? Did. He did. He, he, he went to Fox and said, Can I do this? And they said no. And he went, then he went back with Star Wars. Because it's all the serials that inspired Star Wars anyway. 
to go Star Wars like this, like but Rogers borrowed from John Carter of Mars, but when you saw John Carter the movie, it just felt really odd. I find these more impressive, even though some of them don't hold up very well. I mean, you can see the wires. You can see the wires on the stuff, but the scenery is. It's more Amazing. imaginative. Yeah, because I mean, they had to hand build all that stuff. They couldn't yeah. just computerize it in. The design is very weird looking. I also like that. Don't escape, lizard man. Surrender. And he's just stood there like he's surrendering. So they just kill him anyway. Yeah. He's <laughs> being the most of It has got a bit of a sort of Hunger Games. Um, Costume design to it. Well, Hunger Games like took from it. Yeah. <laughs> so from whichever, whichever part of the planet you're on, now that we're playing this movie, everybody somewhere, somewhere is going to hear Brian Blessed, <laughs> the man who punched a polar bear in the face when it tried to attack you in the North Pole. Now most people say that's a load of rubbish because it's him. You kind of think actually it's probably true. <laughs> Swears like a trooper as well. Still love the fact that they're all like technologically advanced, yet they all fight with maces and swords. Yes. This means a cycle. <laughs> <laughs> really? Who said that? The fair haired prisoner. Yeah, the lizard people aren't exactly uh, the high light of um, movie effects are they and, and costume design they kind of look like something from a kid's school play yeah or like they go out on Halloween because you see their heads yeah <laughs> through the mouth <laughs> their faces are painted pink to make it look like the internal of the mouth but it doesn't look quite right <laughs> that makes no sense, he's given a giant egg and it's like he's playing around for football now. <laughs> Why did he just shoot him? That's a Captain Kirk fighting move, that roll. <laughs> 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 mean go mean time. Mean go mean time. Nah. Nah, nah, nah. nah. You, you, I you, you can tell by the look on her face. Just don't trust her. Tyrion Lannister. In <laughs> that, um. Can hardly breathe in this thing. Helmet thing is just bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it reminds me a little bit of the helmet for, uh, that the guy used to wear in uh, Silent Hill video oh. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the one you mean. <laughs> when they go around around the big... giant cleaver, <laughs> yeah. which you knew you're in deep trouble. I guess because when, apart from this movie and the repeats of the 1930s serial. The other time we got to see Flash exactly Gordon was, was in the uh, Defenders of the Earth. <laughs> well, it was also the uh, short-lived TV oh, series with the guy from Smallville. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I remember <laughs> that. Didn't he get cancelled after like six episodes or yeah. something like that? So this movie was nominated for two BAFTAs, I not what they were. Best costume design. <laughs> Best production design. So we've got four actors in the from the James Bond franchise in this as well. We've already said that Top Hole, yeah. and then we've seen Timothy Dalton, but then you've also got Max von Sydow, who's in the unofficial Never Say Never Again, but I think it's now official. But who knows? And then a very young Robbie Coltrane's in it as well. Blimey, Arnold was going to be in this as well, but uh, his Austrian accent was in being in trouble. So what I want to know is, 
as well. Don't don't get me wrong. Did you enjoy yourself? Sir? They're executing him. I understand you flew the dog. Why the hell do they feel it necessary to put me in a pair of leather tight shorts? Well, to execute it. I think that's probably more to do with um, <laughs> the people behind the film. Blimey, this is another one with our friend Kurt Russell, who was lined up to do this, but he turned it down because he thought the uh, main character lacked personality. <laughs> <laughs> I love this fact. According to the original storyline, the moment when Dale is entranced by Ming's hypnotic ring, she's actually having a vision of being on an erotic picnic with Ming in, <laughs> in a 1920s setting. <laughs> Just weird. Oh, my kid. Executed by Ming. Wonder if you can buy those as props. Flash good. It's probably made out of cardboard, isn't it? Because the thing is, what if I get found out? You, you, you won't. Well, Flash Gordon's alive, so somebody's going to know something hinky went on. Yeah. It's obviously nobody does what anybody says around me. No. quite interesting as well because rather than have actual planets that like you get in a lot of other science fiction that they're kind of all mixed up together so there's like bits of they're just all really strangely designed it's almost like limeade I know. happy shopper limeade that's probably what it is <laughs> If you think about cult science fiction movies, where does Flash Gordon sit for you? I mean, it's up there, quite high. It's probably one of the ones that's like at the forefront. I mean, because there's a there's quite a few classic cult ones that you know you just don't see anywhere. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's the Disney black hole. I mean, that's it's bad. It is bad. It's not that. That is definitely not aged well, has it? No. But I mean, it adds some interesting concepts to it. But yeah. it just wasn't that great. I mean, you've got um, obviously Barbarella. Barbarella, yeah. Uh, it's great for me as well. I'd throw in there, in the cheesiness, obviously space balls, because that's, <laughs> that's just just so funny. What about you? What do you think's in there? Well, I think there's quite a few, wasn't there? Do you remember the Explorers? Yeah, that's with uh, River, River Phoenix. River Phoenix, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good movie. I really like that when I saw it. It does go very trippy. Like Time Bandits as well. Time <laughs> Bandits is genius. Where did she learn to do that? That's awesome. All of a sudden, from a lady who doesn't like flying in planes to a assassin who can backflip and shoot guns. Guards don't really take much punishment, do they? No, and, and obviously they shoot like stormtroopers. That's one thing. W would you do that as well? Would you would you stop to pick up your high heels and leave the gun behind, or would you just take the gun? Yeah, I think it's all about priorities. I've got her. Shoes every time. Where? <laughs> just think about McLean. He suffered without his shoes. Activate yeah, he really suffered without <laughs> his shoes. 
yeah what else is there that you can include in that in that sort of cult sci-fi oh, Dr. Zarkov um, I have a for sore eyes I'd go. probably put Krull in there no I can't rest yeah and in your mind yeah, that's a, that's a really good film. It is really good. It's much better than it ever that it got at the time. Let's see what else. When you look at the IMDb, people also viewed or also looked at. Let's see what that sort of says. I think we find a safe way out. Are you sure? No questions, dear. So we've already done one of these movies because we've done the last Starfighter. So that's it in there. Um. I have located Dale Arkin under the guidance of Agent Sarkov. But Flash Gordon. Yeah, you could put it in there, but I wouldn't really. For, for me, that's. It's alright, but it, well, it, it's more for me. I probably wouldn't watch it as an adult again. I saw it when I was younger. Stop it now! Logan's Run. You've watched Logan's Run before? Donkey's years ago. I really like that film. I think it's very, very clever. Um, Soylent Green. Soylent Green's a great film. Um, then you've got... Oh, I've got a question for you, mate. So, do you reckon there's any Ewoks on that planet? <laughs> no, Wookiees this time. <laughs> I think this is a scene with Blue Peter presenter... Um, Peter Duncan, who went on to become Chief Scout of the UK's Scout, Boy Scout Group, Club, whatever it's called. Um, other ones, Beastmaster, Tron, and then there's got other stuff that we talked about before. Masters of the Universe in there? No. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're doing a new version of that as well. Oh, you know this ain't gonna end well. Who's got some green paint on him? Right, yeah. great test of manhood. Stick your hand in here, and if you get killed by this thing, or stabbed by this thing, we'll kill you, and you won't grow up to be any older than you already are. It's interesting because when you go more like this on the IMDb for um, Master of the Universe, you get Cyborg, the absolutely terrible Jean Van, Van Damme movie, Dark Angel, not the TV series, but the movie starring Dolph Lundgren, Van Damme plus Van Damme equals double impact. Together they totally deliver. Um, the Joshua Tree, again with Dolph Lundgren. Kickboxer, Van Damme. Oh, that's a good film. Yeah, yeah Master of the Universe. Right. Worryingly, it's been directed by McGee. That's not a good sign. It's in development at the moment. I'm extremely worried. Um, Mortal Kombat. The first one. Red Scorpion, Showdown in Little Tokyo. Oh, that's that. I, to be fair, I mean it's cheesy as hell, but it is. It's a good fun action film. The Monster Squad, Universal Soldier, and Dolph Lundgren's version of The Punisher. Oh, cool. Can't believe it. Melody Anderson then went on to make Firewalker with Luke Gossett Jr. and Chuck, Chuck Norris, <laughs> which is one of the worst films I've ever seen. It is totally, totally awful. Never understood what you're saying. Keep playing bloody pipes. Do you stand to see the crystal maze? Exactly. Dun 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 dun. Yes, I thought Peter Wingard, who is Clytus, is none other than Jason King. Very classic 60s TV series, the 60s, 70s. Did you uh, see any stuff from Comic Con? I uh, saw a bit of stuff, saw just a sleeve trailer. 
What did you think? Looked all right. I think the only the only thing I always struggle with is they went down the character route, which obviously that's good to show you what it is. But I would like to have seen just a glimpse of what the story was going to be like, just to pique your interest a little bit. Saw the Wonder Woman trailer. Thought that looked actually quite quite good. It's a bit more. It's got a bit more kick to it. Um, Literally in many sequences. Yes. Um, what else did I see? I saw uh, Hulk's armour for, for yeah. Ragnarok. Um, saw Legion. So that's the X Men spin off show, isn't it? Yeah. Not quite sure about that on the fence. Just because. When I was watching the trailer, have you seen... seen no, I've not seen the trailer for Legion. It's interesting, but... It's another one. It just... It doesn't explain anything. And to be honest with you, I know they do teasers and things like that, but sometimes you're there and you're looking at it and you're thinking, I'm supposed to be interested in this. Why? Yeah, yeah. You, you're not... Yeah. I want a little bit of a sort of a story or a bit more about a character or a bit more about somebody so you can go, do you know what, I really want to see that because yeah, yeah. of this. Um, I can't remember what I saw, the dis USS Discovery. Be interested in that, see what it's like. It's going to be on um, Netflix, isn't it? So yeah. it comes out. Same same playtime as in the US, but just on Netflix for the rest of the world. But, uh, I don't know what else I saw. Did you see any of the Comic Con stuff? Yeah, I saw um, Justice League, um, and I saw the Wonder Woman trailer like you. I also checked out the new Doctor Strange trailer, and I thought that looked really, really good, really good. Yeah, because oh, the other ones I checked out were obviously The Defenders, Daredevil Season 3. Yeah, which was a nice surprise. Yeah. Gordon's alive! Vision of Borea, Prince Baron is aiding him. Baron, I tell you, now is the time to strike. Which I've been watching. Yeah. On. I think that's on Amazon. Yeah. I'd say if if you just like, I mean it's a bit cheesy, well, but I I just like it because I just like Lucifer because he is just such a sarcastic, egotistical you know bloke. Uh, it's just brilliant the way he I'm plays great. it. Um, I saw the Lego Batman trailer. That was hilarious. Yeah, I didn't, didn't look at that one. Tell you what, you should go that about the wrong way. Put your hand down the same hole he put it <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> See, the, and this is the thing I feel a right shame. He puts his hand in there and he takes it out, yet the kid who was yeah. doing the manhood trial. He put his hand in there, he kept it in there for at least 30 seconds, and then he got stung yeah. and died. Yeah, because I make They've the just been changed. <laughs> <laughs> See, what I love about this film as well, but only after they capture Flash Gordon, How long? Hours, and days. they put him in a, a red leotarded type Please. vesty top, Indeed, yet they take the time to put his logo on the front and back. Yeah. <laughs> He's mine. He's mine. Yeah. I See, this set is obviously pretty good in comparison to some of the other stuff. Nope. Oh, he's gone for a mud bath. Saw the Kong Skull Island trailer. Thought that looked, that looked okay. Um. <laughs> so have you been, have you watched been watching Stranger Things? Yes, I've watched all of it. 
Amazing, wasn't it? Excuse me. I thought it was great. Great story. Brilliant casting of all the kids. They looked like they were from the 80s. Absolutely loved it. I mean, it's quite difficult to try and explain it without spoiling it too yeah. much, but for people who aren't, haven't seen it yet, it's basically a story of a, a kid who disappears and then it's the local police trying to understand how he disappeared, his mother getting some messages from him or is it from him and then the arrival in the town of this little girl with unknown abilities. I think that's the good thing about it because obviously you've got really four well actually you've got like five sets of people because I mean obviously you've got the bad guys yeah you see the stuff from their perspective what they're trying to do you've got the girl and the the young lad she meets you see the story from their perspective what she's capable of what they're going through then you've got the the mother of the kid who's gone missing and how it's affecting her and is she crazy or is it real and then you've got obviously the girl and a bit of a douche boyfriend and the kid who's gone missing his brother and what they're experiencing and finding out through um, the way they're looking at because I think it doesn't all come together as such I mean you see the way it comes together and you can work it out but you can see that each of the character stories yeah. they're not fully understanding of what's going on until they all meet and yeah. they can figure it out and obviously you've got the, the police officer who he just knows something ain't right and to be honest with you I think the I think the final episode where a lot of it is explained and a lot of it is explained about his character is very well portrayed yeah it is Definitely one of the best, definitely one of the best shows on Netflix. And um, I highly recommend it, definitely yeah. worth it. And I'm looking forward to the next series of it because I'm sure there'll be a second series. Yeah, it's been doing lots of episodes. I'm right? not surprised, it's really, really good. It's, it's like several Netflix shows, they're worth having the Netflix subscription for. Well, it's, I mean, um, when, obviously my girlfriend Sarah and I, Sarah and I watched it, it's one thing we discussed. Now, don't get me wrong, I think there's a lot of great shows on TV, but what we've come to notice is shows that have got 22 to 24 episodes the production of them is declining so much because they cannot keep a story going over 22 24 episodes i mean in the 90s it was quite easy to do that because i think there were there weren't as many of the same types of shows on. They didn't have to compete as much. And their overlying series arc, they could build it over time. Now, obviously, a lot of shows, they just try and do stuff too quick. But with Netflix, not all the shows, or Amazon, but not all of them, it's all there straight away. You can watch it at your leisure. You can watch all... 13, 10, 13 episodes, binge watch it, yeah. and sometimes you'll go back and watch it straight after, you're, you're looking at it and go, I'll watch that, oh I like that episode, I'll look at that episode again, and I find for me, a lot of it is so well written, 
and so engrossing because it's over only short episodes. It keeps you. But if you think sucked in, it's much more in line with what we're used to over here. Mm. Any more? We're looking about six. Six normally is a typical series for us, isn't it? In the UK, yeah. we don't we don't tend to. Um, get 20 odd episode series and I think it was even back in the even back in the 90s um, there were still problems I mean if you think the, the the one that the series that you tended to see a lot of you saw a lot of Buffet and you saw yeah. a lot of Star Trek they tend to be the big American imports for us along with then you had things like Baywatch and all that type of stuff yeah. but I agree completely the quality in most episodes was fine, but I still think because they did twenty odd episodes, what what happened is is you had several of them which were just guff, and you just yeah. watched them because you were committed to the series and you wanted to know whether it had an impact on further episodes yeah. that 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 longer story arc. And what you're tending to find now is that a lot of people are preferring to do shorter series, but one single arc. And what would be really interesting. As you mentioned just before, with a new Star Trek series, uh, Brian Fuller, who um, people will know did um, Pushing Daisies and then subsequently did the excellent Hannibal TV series. The Hannibal TV series is very is close in um, construction to what is planned to do with Star Trek. It is a continuing storyline. There's not episodic uh, points or episodic nature to it, it is literally this is one continuing arc, one journey that we're going to go on and you, you didn't get that before, you, you, it built up and it got smarter, yeah. only towards the latter seasons of Deep Space Nine did it actually become one continuous thing but you still had 21, 22 episodes and I've been re-watching a lot of the Star Trek stuff some of it is shockingly bad, Yeah. I mean I skipped the first two series of The Next Generation because they're just rubbish in my opinion, but you get into series three, and they're really, really yeah. good. Really good. I think a lot of it that I always used to find was obviously. Where some of it, I can understand where some of it comes from, is as well. Twenty four. Yeah, was sense. great. You needed 24 episodes because of the premise of yeah. the way it was. It was genius. But, I mean, it is like... I think really and truthfully... If you're going to take a risk on TV shows, for me... You need either a charismatic lead who you don't have to give him any backstory. You can fill that in later, but he's either dark or light for a reason and you get engrossed in the character. Or you've got a bad guy who you're thinking, okay, he's extremely nuts. How the hell are they going to deal with this? And build the story or the characters through the story, not the story through the characters, because sometimes when you do it through the characters, it makes no sense. But I mean, it's like you said, you watch Star Trek The Next Generation, I mean, you could sit there, when they go on the diplomatic missions, it's boring, it's boring as hell. Once the Borg and that start coming in, that's when it really... I think I think it's 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 more to do with when they have these odd episodes where they do things that are a little bit quirky. I always get thrown by those. I don't mind some of the conversation episodes because the more I've been watching it recently, in particular, I'm looking at someone like um, Patrick Stewart. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And so different from from Kirk but we've gone off topic slightly haven't we slightly off topic because we've missed the um, 
the excitement of the Baron versus Flash fight on the Rotary of Death. With the spikes. Yeah, the spikes that come up for which kill. I'm going to call him Cletus just because I think Cletus is funnier than his actual name. The one who is a Darth Vader ripoff but with a gold mask, but you can see all his actual features behind it. Our imperial progeny back to populate your land. You really prefer death to the kingdom? His yes. helmet hairpiece is hilarious, isn't I'd it? I'd much rather see you on my side and scattered into It's just very, very shiny. It, 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 is, it is a great villain, though. He's well played. But We shall return to the Imperial Rock. Leave the Earthling here to his doom. I think what's so good, I, I quite like about Ming, in respect to a lot of other villains, is some villains, when they try to portray the bad side, there is, you know, I'm nuts, I'm psycho, I'm this. But with Ming, it's just kind of, well, I'm leaving you here, see ya, I'm off. Yeah. There's no big speech or I'm going to kill you this way or I'm going to do anything. Oh, I'm just leaving you behind, see ya, I'm off. Yeah. Cheerio. And then it's a casual, right, blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> but not, not that he ever knows. What I don't quite get is, for the Hawkmen, why would they have like a sky sled? I only met him about 20 minutes. Well, not 20 minutes. It'd be about, what, eight hours in movie time? With respect, a man who rid us of planters should not be deserved. Will you shut up? So. Let's put it this way. I'd rather have Prince Voltan than Boston Nass any day of the week. <laughs> Fight! But there's no way I can help a man who's dead. Last word to fall down. Voltar, I read you. Where are you? Flying blind on a rocket cycle. Flying blind on a rocket cycle? Yes. Uh, <laughs> we are in a warrior. I'll send you a homing beam. Thanks, Alton. Hey, for what it's worth, Ming's got Dale, Zarkov, and Baron. I see. I thanks to you. Yeah? What for? For giving a dumb old bird a second chance. <laughs> Over the homing beam. Yeah, so I think that was the thing I read online as well. That those wings were so heavy and cumbersome, they couldn't actually sit down. So yeah. their backs they had to lie on their on their fronts. <laughs> In between breaks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go fight. You can go through the thing. Oh, no, it's not. No, they're fighting with cushions. Could be faking it. Don't still give her a black eye. How could, how could you not know what your father was you, like? He basically just destroyed and slaughtered millions of people. And his name is Ming the Merciless. Yeah. You'll be cozying up with him again in the morning. Not if you give him this. It's deadly poison. My father always drinks a power potion before he wakes up. Drop this into his glass. Power potion, eh? Gave your father my word of Is that a monster or a relentless? To try and 
try and be a good wife? I think it's probably Luke's name. <laughs> it might be, yeah. Body would. My father has never kept the Unless, of course, life. Monster Relentless <laughs> or Big Say want to sponsor the show, <laughs> then, of course, we totally endorse the value and energy that they provide. <laughs> Take you to the waiting room. Your joyous time has come. Follow us. You are to be prepared for your wedding. I'm lost, Dora. Nothing can save me now. Wait, 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 wait. Well, what I mean is, he's not really here. You don't need to repeat what I said. Flash Gordon's on his way. <laughs> oh, look at that blonde hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> I like the fact they kept the ships like the 1930s style. Yeah. I swear those um, rocket cycles got recycled for Master of the Universe. <laughs> Not holding up these days, is it? <laughs> no. Stand by my yeah, I think the thing is that doesn't really matter because it's the campiness that makes it interesting. So I, I think it's genius as well. He is definitely a great tactician. He's got all the guys with the guns at the front who can shoot the ship, and all the guys with the swords at the back. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I know he's saying dive, but it does sound like die. <laughs> so it's almost like saying, actually. <laughs> You've got to admit, it is absolutely quality as well. Because it's, it is, you can see Star Wars took some of its stuff from this, because obviously the bad guys fire red lasers, yeah. whereas the good guys fire blue lasers. That, that would probably be my only criticism. How the hell did they fit all their men on that ship? Because yeah, it's not overly big and at least a hundred people have died so far. <laughs> Just 
Blessed shoots quite a few people with that big cannon thing, and nothing happens to them. They, they just die. He shoots a hole <laughs> in that seat, and it's massive. <laughs> And that reminds me of when they were walking. It reminds me when you used to have your toys in the 80s and the batteries were running out. Yeah. <laughs> How did someone get the chance to write Long Live Flash on there? <laughs> You don't tell that, sir. Same wedding music that they play on Earth. I know. And she's wearing all black. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, preachers will make merry. Party time. And the pain of death. Mini fist bump there. That's wicked. <laughs> yes. Well, it's time to burn. Sorry, Bolton, I'm not coming. What? The rocket cycle's gone. So come on, I'll carry you. Bail out, Bolton, before it's too late. Flash. Are you crazy? The fire's too heavy. You know we'll never make that opening with nobody at the wheel. Oh, come on, we blow to pieces, Flash. It's suicide. No. Transaction. One line for billions. Come on, you've been destroyed. You only burned. Get out of here. 
Say so about half of the Hawkman population has been wiped out. Yeah. Take us to me. We do not lead traitors to the Imperial presence. We'll find a way. Grab an image of one of those agents. <laughs> They've got to get away, they all shut down. Ah, oh, not wasted. Thank you. Rocket Ajax still approaching. Life form scanners identify Earthling Gordon at the controls. We guarantee its destruction when it reaches the lightning field. General Carla. General Carla, will you please show yourself on my screen? Wait. We've got to deactivate the lightning field. Where are the atomic generators? There's no time. They're six miles underground. I'm heading for sector Alpha 9. Hold the fort. Nice. Yeah. Black goo. <laughs> That's the best miss ever. <laughs> I can't believe that guard bowed at the moment he shot to check his mate out. This is the thing I always find it shame. You know, the guards are just walking around, doing their jobs, and they get shot. Yeah. Nobody says to them, you know, do you want to work for me? Because yeah. we're going to kill him. Uh, you can come work for us. Yeah, just come around with us. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Thanks very much. Exactly. No one thinks about their families, do they? Do in those circumstances. The only thing I'd say is the only bonus is, I mean, if they get shot, I mean, they're wearing complete red, so the blood's not going to stain the uniform. No, that's so the true. missus only going to have to wash it. But that's like <laughs> our old, um, the old British Army. That's why we used to wear red, so no one could see us. Like our soldiers when they were bleeding. I do. Until you grow weary of her. <laughs> this is the longest three minutes ever. <laughs> it certainly is a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With this ring, it kind of looks like the um, little creatures that uh, Yondu has on his control panel <laughs> on his ship. Start firing lasers and shoot all the guests. <laughs> Epic villain uh, impalement sequence. Oh, that's definitely going to leave a mark. Now, if it's had gone straight through the middle, surely that would have gone through spine. And but now he's up and moving. The game's lost me. Thing is, he looks genuinely terrified as well. Yeah. It's like he's been taken out of this sequence. Like what? It's become one with a force now. Ding.
See, ultimately, that's so clever because you think. The reactors are destroyed. Glad you made it, Voltan. What happened to the body? But if you look at it, it's sort of projected inside the ring. Yeah. <laughs> they improvised that as well because didn't know how to end that particular scene. City's probably not there anymore. No. <laughs> yeah, no. That looks like a recycled scene. Yeah. Reuse the footage. Thanks, Flash. Who'd have thought that people in Mongo are familiar with skywriting? <laughs> That's great formation flying as well from the Hawkmen. <laughs> Even thought that bit would have been cleaned up. Ooh. <laughs> He's not dead. Exactly. Look at that on electro records and tapes. Yes. Cassette it, baby. So, Flash Gordon. Rating. Oh, for me, uh, um, for, it's got to be a nine. Um, it's just camp brilliant. Um, not really much of a logical story to it but I don't think it needs to have no. a story because it's just awesome cheese yeah what about for you mate I, I am the same I, I give it a nine easy I think I watch it with complete rose tinted glasses I go back to my six year old self watching this for the first time on BBC TV in the mid 1980s and just think yes and you can discard all the the aged effects because it's about you use your imagination a little bit more you put you go yeah. along with it and yeah it's cheesy acting cheesy dialogue but it's just great fun it's a good job there's no drinking games with it because you'd be absolutely slaughtered <laughs> so um Alongside the epic soundtrack, let's just uh, pause up there. Um, so that's our Flash Gordon conversation. Um, we'll obviously do another movie show next week and uh, try and do a little trailer and all that type of stuff. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, thank you, Ed. Thank you, James. And uh, we'll speak to you soon. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>